Hello everyone, Phil Brown here with JITCAD Cam. Today I'm going to go over templates inside of Fusion 360 for the manufacturer workspace. That being said, I am going to tell you guys, don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe because next week we're going to deep dive into expressions and this is going to kind of change everything that you do in Fusion and really speed up these workflows to make programming very easy. Now, that being said, let's go ahead and look at Fusion and see what we have to do. So I'm going to do this on both mill and lathe parts. It is a universal concept. Well, let's start with the basics. What is a template? Well, a template is the ability to generate things that you have saved when it comes to tool paths. So for example here, if I right click on my setup and the key element is when putting a template in, we have to right click on the setup guys, is you want to create a template and you can create a template right from here. So as you can see here, this is actually a milling template with a two inch face mill, but just like that, I created my tool path. Now we can stack multiple things together when we do this and I'm gonna show you how. So what I wanna do on this lathe part is I am gonna hit it with some very fast tool paths, right? We're gonna do you know, our facing and then we're gonna go in OD rough and then I am gonna go in and do an OD finish. And a couple of things here real quick guys is I am gonna turn off, don't allow axial grooving. Now this is very important is whatever you have set inside of these paths when you set this file up. Nope, oh, let me go back and hit that one again. We don't want to allow is whatever you have in the path is what is going to carry through. And that's true for anything and everything that you have set here from your stock to leave to even whatever your default speeds and feeds are. Now, as you can see, based on my stock size, I have my roughing, my facing cycle and everything generated. I am gonna do one other thing, again, just for preparatorial reasons, is we are gonna do multiple passes here based on our stock, right? Now, if my stock size changes in any way, this is the cool thing to get you going on this, is you have the ability to adjust your stock size, and as you're seeing now, based on parameters and control, my tool path is automatically updating. To include even this error right so again we're going to go ahead and radial extend that and now we no longer have errors well i'm going to take all three of these and now we're going to make a template right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to right click and i'm going to go down here to the bottom we're going to store this as a template and what i'm going to call this this is my q axis lathe od rough finish right so in the future, I have the ability to pull this back in. Now this is stored to the cloud. I highly recommend putting these in the cloud if you're looking to save these for other team members to use. More commonly as a senior programmer, my junior programmers could pull my templates. But again, just like we showed you, is we have that ability to, I'll start from scratch all over again, right? So we're gonna create our setup. We're gonna go ahead and make that stock size just a little bit bigger. And then with that being said is I'm just gonna right click on my setup here and I'm gonna go in and right there is my template, right? So I right click, create from template, paste my template. And as you can see, this is now automatically recognized everything and anything on my part. Now, what does that look like on the mill side? Well, it's basically identical. As you guys can see here, I'm gonna clean out all these tool paths from the exometry part. If you guys haven't seen, I actually did both the lathe and the mill exometry part, but let's go in, create our setup. Again, we do our Z-axis up, there's my stock size. Again, as you guys adjust your stock size, remember a lot of these tool paths, and this is why I heavily lean, and I tell people like 2D tool paths are amazing, don't get me wrong, when you're starting out. But now we're in a system of like, how can we do it fast? You're gonna wanna use a lot of 3D here because it is model aware when it comes to those geometries. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna again, give it a 2D face. I know after everything I just told you guys, but there's my facing cycle. From my facing, again, we're gonna go into an adaptive clearing and we're gonna swap out to a half inch end mill. And what you're gonna notice here is I'm not picking speeds and feed guys, and there's a big reason for that, and you'll see why. We're gonna finish this up with a 3D contour. Again, using that half inch end mill, we do want the tool to go to outside. And another pro tip for you guys is if you set some angles in here, you could actually control just using that to only do vertical faces. Again, I would adjust this quite a bit, right? The idea of a template is to find something you do that you repeatedly do to make your life easier, right? 
So again, I take all my tool paths, I right click all of them. I'm gonna go ahead and right click and I'm gonna store as template. Now this is, you know, my three axis mill rough finish. So again, you guys have the ability to label these any way that you like. And again, I'm gonna go ahead and delete all that out of there. And then we're gonna go in from scratch once again. You're just right clicking, creating from template picking your template that you customized. And again, because we did use 3D toolpaths, everything is self-aware. Now, if you do create a toolpath with 2D, and I'm gonna use a bore, for example, and in the case of this part, we did a, I think a half inch flat on that bore. And we're gonna need to give this a face. And now, as you notice, I have my boring cycle, right? Maybe I use this end mill all the time. The degree is different for my helix, things of that nature. But let's store this as a template, right? So this is a bore, and I'm gonna throw a one quarter inch. And with that, we can again delete. Once we go through with creating our template of that toolpath, you're gonna notice you're gonna get this error. And the reason why we're getting this error, again, this is why I love Fusion. Other softwares just tell you there's a problem and they don't tell you what's wrong. It's kind of like dealing with uh, your wife from time to time if you're like me. But as you can see here is it's saying no machinable face is found. So if I double click that toolpath, it jumps automatically to where that face is and what needs to be selected, right? So again, as now I pick that face, I hit OK. So again, I warn a lot of people, be careful with the 2D side because it is self-generated. So you do have to do things like this. Now, this gets better and better the more you do things. But now the problem is, is we have templates created and I don't want you guys to make a million templates, right? I don't want you to go out and let's just say you did like I did here, right? We just two inch face into some half inch work. You know, I don't want you to make one for steel, one for aluminum, one for this, one for that, right? So as you can see, I can highlight these all in real time and I can right click compare and edit. Now this is why you didn't see me set up speeds and feeds on the tool paths again is because i like to bulk edit all of them in one shot right so now i can come down and i can type in you know material speed and feed and i can find that type of stuff so actually we're going to go ahead and give me a second here it's been a minute since i've had to go in and pick these oh yeah there it is even the best of us make these mistakes guys all righty here we go so as you can see on my facing i can now click I don't have any speeds and feeds tied to that tool, but now if I go over to adaptive, you can see how I have all my speeds and feeds listed here. So again, on my contouring, now we're gonna go back and we're gonna do aluminum finishing. And just like that, we've updated our speeds and feeds across this tool path. So again, this is in my opinion, a very handy tool when we're doing these templates, right? So you're able to, one, get the paths on the part first. This is the part I think a lot of people miss. They try to make, you know, like, again, as I have a couple of templates I used to use that had 30 plus operations, it's better to have a template with almost too much and then delete the stuff you don't want and then come back in and fix the few things you need to fix, right? But the idea is, is when you're building a template, you're generalizing what you do. Now you can have specific templates, nothing wrong with that guys, but if you're jumping around job to job at a job shop, very commonly, it's not like every part you get is just 1018 steel guys. But the ability to go in on the fly, edit these things. Now, here's another pro tip, and this is where I really start to see the value of things. And this leads me into the fact that you're going to want to like, follow, and subscribe because next week we're going to dive even deeper into expressions. Now, the value of expressions in this case is, is if I actually go to this optimal load and I edit the expression, notice how this is actually being generated based on a tool diameter and the step over based on a percentage, right? So 40% tool step over. Now, I think I actually set that myself. So we're gonna reset default just to make sure. Yep, so it is based on tool diameter. Now, remember, we are going through and we're starting to use the speeds and feeds out of Fusion 360. Now, what we're gonna wanna do with that is I'm gonna edit this tool and I'm gonna show you something that you guys should be setting up now. And again, I, I cannot recommend this enough, but when we go into our aluminum roughing, for example, we actually have a step down and a step over parameter to pull from. Now, again, you saw my path, it's tool diameter times 0 0.4, 40%. I actually wanna use this 0 0.125 
because this is tied to an individual speed and feed. Again, we go to finishing. You'll see that changes in step over just to give it a little nicer cut. And this is where we can really start to streamline our process and really fix what we need to fix inside of Fusion. So again, we're gonna go back to our tool path. I'm gonna go to that optimal load, and then we're gonna edit that expression. And if you guys just go ahead and remove that tool.diameter, we can now actually start to type in step over. And as you're gonna see is we have four different options here. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use tool step over. And as you're gonna notice, I get an invalid expression. So this is a live data field, guys. So again, we're gonna go ahead and back that up. Tool underscore step. And we're gonna actually use this other one, which is tool step over. And as you're gonna see, the result is gonna pull through whatever that speed and feed is. And a lot of you are probably like, Bill Brown, that's not 0.125, is it? No, it's not right now. And the reason why it's not is because we're still set to custom. So again, is if I go aluminum roughing, now you're gonna notice it's changed to 0.125. Again, we go down to aluminum finishing, that is now 0.075. So the value here is extremely, extremely useful if you are now doing things with templates and you're wanting to control this path as much as possible based on the tool parameters, remember? So again, is when I go in and I actually go to my compare and edit, so you actually have to pick the paths, not the setup, guys. And then I wanna set up my own speeds and feeds on the fly like you saw me do here. Again, is based on what I'm setting these, is it's automatically gonna update my tool paths accordingly. And if you guys didn't catch that there, you'll notice my step over actually changed in real time. So I just control Z undid that. So if you look very closely here, my step over is very shallow. And if I go ahead and redo that, again, you can now see my step over is much larger at the end of the day. So this is why it's so important to start to get much more nitty gritty with setting up your tools and why the value is of your tools. Now, with that being said, as always, guys, I hope this helps you to understand templates a lot more, what you're capable of with templates and how much better you can make your parts with templates. But it's not what you know, it's who you know. And I gotta remind you guys, we do have a huge sale right now, both on our support package, as well as Fusion 360 till the end of the month. So if you're looking to sign up for our support package so that you could have me make your post-processor changes or check out my post-processor videos, I'm here to do that for you, as well as get you some training and support your software and all your future endeavors when it comes to Fusion. But as always, you guys, have a great rest of your day.